say, let me, let me share my screen. So before we go into the class for today, we will quickly have a review of um, what we did in our last class. We'll also review our assignment, right? For those who were able to finish, those who were not able to finish, we'll take a look at that and then we'll quickly go over what um, our plan is to achieve for today. So um, today we are basically going to be looking into what we call data manipulation languages. We're going to be looking into writing select statements and manipulating data, which is like the bedrock of, um, of SQL, right? So we'll spend time, we'll take it gradual, we'll take it nice and slow, and we'll make sure that everyone understands the basics. Like we've always said, the foundation is um, what really matters. Once you get that right, then I think every other thing will be um, easy peasy. As my son would say. So I'll um, let me go start from the current slide. So so basically, I'll do a quick review and then Timothy will um, take us through a brief session on looking at what the assignment um, was for the last class and then we'll move over to uh, we'll move over to our class for today. So in our last class we talked about a lot of things but one of the key things we did talk about was um, databases right so we talked about um, databases and then the different types of databases. So this was like an introduction into databases. So we also explained that, I'm trying to get my annotations. So we explained that there are basically uh, uh, different types of databases, but our focus was on the, the three large sections or groupings that we can group our databases into. Right, so we talked about flat file databases. We talked about relational database management systems. And then we also talked about not only SQL databases. We highlighted the differences, we highlighted the strengths and weaknesses of some of these different databases. And we also explained that we are following the path of where we have the green line, right? And the green line here, basically, um, the green line here is what we're going to um, follow, right? So under um, databases, we're going to be looking in depth to what relational database. In the last class, we also tried to explain why we refer to them as relational databases. And then on the uh, relational- Quick, quick one, Cecil. Can yes. you, can you um, uh, make a slide, uh, slide view, F5? Yeah, for some reason. Use HP. Yeah, F, yeah, I think F five F five will work. Except if it's Mac. Yeah, I've tried F five and it's not, it's not working. working. Yeah, and the Shift F five should be what should work. Let me close the app and open it again because I think it's probably hanging on something. So. So yeah, and also. On my own Zoom, I was able to access the annotations. For some reason, I can't see them here. Um, so now I will I will check the annotation for you at the back end. Okay. Probably it's a security. Um, yeah, it, it could just be that. It's, um, but just put it in L five and uh, slideshow. Yeah. Um, so that folks will be able to. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so basically we talked about the different databases, right? And we also agree that our focus will be on relational database management systems. And we'll be talking a little more in detail about relational databases. And then we also talked about the reason why we're learning SQL. So SQL is a universal uh, scripting or database language for all relational databases. 
right? And there are so many different databases out there. And you get to hear of SQL Server, you get to hear of MySQL, you hear of Oracle, you hear of DB2, Seabase, there are a lot of them out there. These, these are um, just proprietary products owned by different companies. And most times they have, they also try to build some other functionality on top of the existing regular SQL database to be able to sell their product better. Right, so that's um, basically how um, the different databases are, the way you have Yahoo Mail, you have Gmail, that uh, uh, kind of scenario. So for all these databases, we there are different ways of queries you can write against the databases, right? So we talked about data definition languages, data manipulation languages, and then data control languages. Our focus is on data manipulation languages because we believe that as the data analyst, one of the key things you will be doing will be what manipulating and presenting data. Right. So we in the data analytic world, you hear a lot of times you hear the word ETL, right? Which means extract, transform, and load. So with the power of SQL, you'll be able to pull data from a specific source manipulate that data or transform that data and then push it to a specific destination. A simple example would be, you're getting data from somewhere, like uh, back when I worked in FIRS, we could pull data sometimes from banks, right? And then we tried to compare them with um, maybe taxpayer data that we had in our own database. So sometimes some databases might say first and last name together. They could save first name and then other names while others will say first name, middle name, initials, or other names. So with the power of SQL, you'll be able to what? Match that data and say, okay, if it's coming from here and it's separated, and my destination wants it put together, then you'll be able to concatenate that data and send it to that destination. These are some of the kind of things we'll be taking a look at today when we start writing our SQL script. We also talked about database objects and then tables as one of the key or most important database objects. This is similar to what you can see in your Excel spreadsheet. So we talked about other possible database objects that exist like views and all that, and we'll be delving into them in more detail. We talked about um, constraints, right? Or constraints that we can add to our data in databases. This is one of the things that um, make relational databases very powerful. This helps with what data validation. So with constraints, you'll be able to limit the kind of data or the type of data that would be would be able to go into your database and into those specific tables, thereby improving your data integrity. I'll go a little bit faster because I know you have this slide and you'll be able to um, go over them. I'll do this so that we get into the meat of the matter, right? And as we do that, we'll see um, how interesting and how simple these things are. Then we also talked about database normalization and um, Timothy went over this, tried to explain to us. It's basically trying to what, create discrete, create your data to be as discrete as possible so that what it's, um, it reduces redundancy, it reduces um, duplication and then the chances for error. So you can go over this and then also review the different types of um, normalization. Then we also give this um, scenario a picture of how data can be what inserted into databases. There are a lot of different ways that this can be done. When you go into, when you have a bank account, there are so many ways you withdraw or and you deposit money into your account. You can do that via the ATM. You can do that via your mobile app. You can do that via your web app. And all these things are synchronized in such a way that all these push data into the same database. Right, you can even write raw SQL statements to add and remove data from your database. Then we also took a look at um, relational database diagrams. Any able to get anything up as regards the annotation? So, an entity relationship diagram is basically explains how your tables relate with each other in a relational database management system. If we come to um, this place here now, you can see that we have a customer table, we have customer address. All right. 
we have an address, then we have an address table, product category, and then the product. So if you look at this table, the customer can be related to the customer address using what, like the customer ID. In most cases, this is referred to as what the primary key. And your primary key easily references another um, table to link them up together, right? So a, a good and simple example is what we call the one-to-many relationship, like one man with many children. So here is also a product and a product category. So if you go online and you want to shop on Amazon, you want to shop on Jumia, most times you see things like, or you go on Walmart, you see grocery section, you see a section for clothing and all that. So you can create a product category for the different um, items that you sell, right? And then you can save that in the product category table. So in the product category table, we would have uh, the different information under the name column here, we can have, uh, let's say clothing, right? And then in the product table here, we'd have information. Let's say we have a t-shirt. We'll put the name of the t-shirt. We'll put all that information of the t-shirt. We'll have a product ID that would uniquely identify that specific t-shirt. And then somewhere in this column, we'll also have a product category ID. Instead of writing clothing, we're going to just impute the ID that is referencing that clothing from the product category table. And with this, we'll be able to write SQL queries to um, relate this data. And we also explained that, imagine that I decide to move a lot of items or change the name of the category. I'll only come and update the ID. I, I don't even need to update the ID. Once I update the name, this ID remains the same, right? And it references that table. So it's easier than having to come to look for all the rows in your table to make that name change. It also increases data integrity. So I would, um, I'll stop here for now and I'll hand it over to Timothy to go over, quickly go over the assignment and um, then we'll go into our class for today. All right, okay. Okay, let me just share my screen. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much, Susan. That, that was a quick recap, especially for those that missed the last class and possibly did not go through the recording. A quick recap, you know, talking about relational database management system. Okay. Let's not get to the myths. Okay. All right. I just want to let me just open up that uh, the file for. Just yeah, that, one second. Yeah, that is fine. So for those that the forty percent that are tempted, um, on the chat, you know, why Timothy is trying to pull this, on the chat, I just want to have a feel of what happened. You are tempted. So what now happened? On the chat, please, just some response. Those that are tempted but did not finish, what happened? Is it that you, you are tempted and probably completely forgot to finish, or wow. you got to some point? Yeah, like point, what? Like what happened? Okay, I'm seeing uh, Adekunle said error messages. Tunde said, don't get confused. Oh, okay, cool. It's, it's... Uche, Uche, while you spin up your um, app, I think it will also be nice for you to talk to them briefly about um, um, micro, um, SSM so that they understand that this is uh, the same thing with what they are using, right? Explain the ID and SQL Server Management Studio. Okay. So Rafi, okay. uh, Latifat, uh, one second, Uche, I just want to, just make sure you are set. Just give me yeah, I'm uh, set. Yeah, 20 seconds. Latifat said, go stock, okay? Emmanuel, go stock with some of the steps. Go stock, ah, go stock is not the cliche here. What is good? <laughs> okay, we'll explain. Try several times, go stock. Ah, okay, I couldn't find my database, okay? Uh, let's see, error message, error message, error message. So many error messages, okay, cool. Query at line this. Okay, cool. Now, I think Sesu was also trying to teach us when you have an error message, your ability to read what the error is. I think Uche will get to some of this as well. Uche, please take it away. All right. Okay, welcome class. And uh, I just want to go through the 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 assignment that was uh, that was set. Okay. The the first thing that we needed, as everybody is seeing my screen. Are you still where my yes. mouse is? Okay. And if you get there, you're gonna see that is the server. You understand that is your SQL server. If you have installed it, 
it's going to be either your name or something, but this is actually what we call the server. You understand? So when we say the server, we are actually talking about the house. You understand? The server is the house itself. So if you get it into your house, there are different compartments. So, so the, the server is the actual house we are looking at. So if you're going to look for anything, first of all, you need to get to the house. You need to connect to the house where you want to start searching. So that's what we call as your server. If, if I go down, you're going to see there are different databases in there. You're going to see adventure works. You're going to see adventure works DW2019. These are different databases. So if you get it into your house, there are different rooms inside your house. So the, your bedroom is one of your databases. You, know, you can have many rooms in a house. You can have many databases in your server. Okay. So in, in, if we look at that, I will look at, we've talked uh, about the house, so, we've so, talked so, about- so, so, Sorry, one second, um, Tim, two things. Number one is uh, your mouse. Are you using your mouse to illustrate? We can't see your mouse. Okay, are you seeing my mouse now? No. What we are seeing, are you sure you are sharing the right screen? Yes. Can you, are, are you, you seeing my are you screen? Sharing your, are, you seeing... are you sharing your entire screen or just the window? I'm, in, I'm just sharing this window. Try sharing the entire screen. Let's see. That You're one. not seeing it. No, we are not. Can you stop sharing and share again? That is one. Then two. Okay. Then two. Your connection is acting up a little bit. Can you turn off your your camera as well? Yeah. That might also help your your bandwidth. Let me, let me turn off. Okay. I use. Okay. Sorry. Let me. Sorry. Let me just open. Are you seeing this? Hold on. Hold on. Let me. Hold on, uh, share, and then, are you seeing it? Yes, we can see it now. You can see my mouse? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so what I have explained is the database is the house. Inside the house, there can be many rooms, which are your databases. You understand? The other one is your server. So when we when I send the screenshot to just say, first you connect to your server, this is the server where you need to connect to. Sislo uh, mentioned it last week. You need to see this green connected. When we say this green it is connected, that means your server is open, you can get in. If it is not connected, that means you cannot get in into your house. Then if, if we look on top where I'm gonna click on the drop down, you're gonna see, the databases. Am I making? Are you seeing it? You're going to see Adventure Works 2019. Some people might have 2017 or different databases that you have on your own house, okay, which is your server, but these are the different databases. So, all we're just trying to say is this if you send your child a message inside the house to just say, go upstairs, go pick up my shoes, you understand? If you say, go upstairs, go pick up my shoes, where is it going to pick up the shoes? You need to say, go upstairs inside my room. You need to tell him where the shoes are. So that is what we are actually doing. So we've gotten into this house, which is your house, which is your in the similar rooms, which are the databases. So that is all we, all we ask you to do. So these statements we are just issued now is you're just directing you to just say, okay, go in that my database, go to my person, person's room. Okay, the person here is a, what we call a, a schema. You understand the schema? Uh, is two people uh, can answer uh, too much, but uche, their uche, surname uche, might be different. Uche, uche, one second, can you hear me? I'm hearing you. Yeah, please, can you turn on turn off your camera? Let's see if it will improve. It glitches at some point. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if 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 it's, if you are using Rogers or or Bell or or Etisalat. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I'm using Shaw. Okay, Shaw. Sure. Yeah, Shaw sure, 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 sure is, sure is okay. a good network. Yeah, go on, go on. Okay. So if we see here, what I'm just saying is not that we are in this server, which is your house, in the database, which is your actual room, we are looking for, we just say, give us everything from salesperson. So if I run this, you're going to see the result set, okay? But look at what is going to happen. If this place is in a different room like DB, DW configuration, and I run this, you're going to have an error. It's not going to find it because you're telling it to look for something in the wrong place. So and I need to go back here. If you see this kind of error, you see, you say invalid object. What your child is actually telling you, it is not there. There is no cupboard inside that room you, you've told me to go to. So in that case, uh, you now need to tell him the actual room where it is, which is why I will just select the database again and I will execute it again. And you're gonna see how you have your result set. Okay. That is one. The second one is I'm selecting everything. I'm just saying, go to my room, bring every of the books that is in there. You understand? It's a lot. It could be a, a whole lot of books. But if you're looking for a particular one, I can say, go to my room, go bring my book, or go bring my Bible, which is a book in your house. You understand? In that case, you need to specify that is the Bible. I will not say, which is a equivalent of what I have said, select all from person where last name is Duffy. If I execute it, you're going to say it, it will narrow your result set. The last time we mentioned, I used to work at MTN and one guy just wrote a select all and imagine the volume of data that comes in in teleco. So we had the server on almost went down. You understand because of this, because it was trying to pull everything. So they just called him and, and yes, and those queries were killed. So you need to be specific of what you're looking for to minimize what you're searching for. So that was the second statement, which is what I wrote here. Apply a filter, telling them specifics. This query I'm highlighting is actually supposed to, to trip People, okay. Since no one how, how we mention it when we are when we are doing some other thing, but what actually this table is is I didn't want you to insert into this table, okay? Because whatever you will insert there is wrong, and that is one of the things we talk about database integrity. The information that is in there needs to be reliable. So I didn't want you to compromise the integrity of this data. So what I did was I said, select into test from this. What it actually says was make a copy of that database into another table, uh, make a copy of that table into somewhere else. You understand? It, it, it's like uh, you're just telling your, your child, don't scribble on, on a a particular paper that is useful to you, you just make a, a copy of it and tell the child, say, okay, you can play around with this. So that was what I, I did. So if you run it now, watch, I'm going to have an error because it tells me this object already exists in the database. You understand? That means I already have that thing you're telling somebody to take something and put it into the basket and the person tells you, the thing is already in the basket, you can't put it in the basket. So there are two things you can do. Either you take it out from the basket, you take whatever that is in there out from the basket, make space and put it back there. Or you say, okay, it's already in the basket, let me continue. So people that had this issue are people that have run it the first time, and then they run it the second time. So, so how we're gonna just take you through that, but if I want to run it the second time, the first thing I would just say, I would just say drop that table. You understand, which is drop that object that I have put in there. And when I, I say drop, I say 
drop the table and the name is test. If I execute this, it's going to drop it and it's going to tell me it's gone. If I rerun this again, it will now work. All right. So when I've made the copy of this test into contact test, I needed to check the copy of what I have made. Is it there? That was why I, I told you to run this select from text and I ran it. And you can now see I have actually made a copy of that table. So you can now afford to play with the copy of this table yourself so that whatever change you have made, whatever thing you have made, it's it's your own, it's your play area, all right? There are still things that if you are interested in SQL a whole lot more, we'll begin to teach you that because this table you have created is permanent. And if it's a table I just want to use now to test, and I want when I close my section, it is there, and I don't want to keep a, a whole lot of dirty things in the house cluster, I will put a hash on the table and, and that hash, if, if I go here and I drop this, I would have dropped it. And if I run it and I put a hash on it, it will still create the table for me. And I can come in here and I just say, select all from test. It will still give me the data, but what now happens is immediately you close this section, SQL automatically does a cleanup that that hash test will disappear. You understand so that you don't gather a, a whole lot of deaths onto your database because sometimes you're testing, you're creating temporary tables and all of that. You understand how? So, but when you, if you are interested in the advanced SQL, then those tricks will now just be, be taught to you, which I would strongly recommend that you, you you after this class to just try and 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 further your your knowledge on on SQL. So now that I have created this table, all right. If I want, I will I will insert it. But what I'm gonna do is just to continue with the exercise. I'm gonna just drop the temporary one I have created, and I'm gonna do the main one I have given you people to run. And then I would do them again, and that's that. So what I now want to do is I want to you want to search things in your house. You want to bring new things in your house. You want to remove old things from your house, or you want to change things in your house. So those are just what we call as the data manipulation languages. So here, yeah, and I just want to bring in something in my house and I add a record, which is, which is like you've gotten a new customer. You want to add the information of a new customer into your database. In that case, you're going to do an insert. So I'm just inserting into person, a little contacts, Lean to contact type. So person the contact type is like your is like your first name and your surname on your on your data or on your table. So if I run this, it will execute it and I want to check what have I inserted. I will check it. Is is this? I have seen what I have inserted and it's there. All right. Now that is there. I want to update it. I want to manipulate it to just change it. Like somebody comes now and say, I'm married. My surname has changed. I have sworn an affidavit. I will want to change the information on the system or a particular product. We used to call it something. And now it's a new name. We need to, we need to update it. Or probably you're applying for child subsidy. At first you were earning $2,000 a month, and now you're earning $5,000 a month, they need to now put your new salary inside the database. In that case, your data needs to change, and that is actually what we mean by update. So all I'm saying here is change the name to business analyst where the name is a data analyst. It can be changed 
Timothy's salary to five to $2,000 where the name is Timothy Ikegu, you understand? So, so you run that update statement and you just say it's uh, executed. Then I, I want to actually check what I have all updated. Is it actually there? I am setting it to a business analyst. If I run this data analyst, which was it before it will return for me zero records because I have all updated it. But if I take this now, which is my new information, and I put it in here. If I now run it, you're going to see your, your data. All right. So, but when we, when you get it into advanced SQL, because uh, no matter how you write queries, you can never be sure that you have not made a, a mistake. If you run an insert or you run an update in a database, you might make a mistake. So what I usually teach younger programmers or younger data analyst people is to always use this code. Begin transactions, test what you have changed and roll back the transaction so that you actually show that what you're testing is what you expect to get. Because if you do not do it and you do an update, and you back uh, like you run that update and you have updated like one million rows. You, you need to pray to God that the backup team has the backup to return it back to you. And that might be an issue. The whole management is, is gonna know about it and people are just gonna query the kind of developer you are. So I always tell people, Learn this. If you're running an insert and update, anything that will change the structure of the data or the information that is in the data, I always say begin transaction, run my update, select what you what you think the changes be, and then roll back transaction. If you do that, it will be able to show you after I have made that change. This is what the information now looks like. If you're happy with it, you can now highlight the update one and you run it. Okay, how about those are some of the things that if you get into advanced, not really advanced SQL, you understand, yes, but you can't expect to, to learn a whole lot that you're gonna do within this four weeks on of training, huh? but, but SQL is interesting. And when you look at things, people keep their information in a database, people store their information somewhere. So whichever kind of job you are gonna be looking at, my wife, she's a nurse, and they look at confluence and they look at all of these things to, to get their articles from. So they are all databases. So when you learn the databases and you learn it, it cuts across every area of your life. I don't know if anybody has any, any question as regards to what I have. Yeah, shared. yeah, yeah. Thank you so very much, um, Uche. Thank you. Uh, great, great explanation. Uh, why that is going on, you know, some some folks are already talking about you've answered their question. In fact, this is where I got stuck, you know. So obviously it makes sense to a whole lot. Um, I also believe as well that, you know, um, for some that are new, 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 they will be like, what, what is this man talking about? Like. Is, is this man speaking English or is speaking Latin? Uh, I know there are some in those categories uh, because in the last class, we didn't have so much time to delve into the basic of DML, SLS statement and all that, even before the assignment was given. And I think that was also a plan that you guys had, give the assignment and see how, you know, um, how the participants will be able to react. And it's interesting to see that 40% were able to, you know, 44% were able to complete it, which was good. Then of course, what I would think we can do is, for those that have questions, especially errors, I know there are a lot of you that talked about, you have error, let which you deal with those errors. Like you have any error, this is the time now, let's kind of resolve that. After that, then we'll come back to SESU. SESU, we will need to take it from the very granola now, um, which I have said so many things. You talked about insert statement. 
He talked about rollback. He talked about begin. There are some people here that don't even understand what is rollback, what is insert, what is begin, what is select. Let's take it from the primary, primary, that is the, from the very, very basic. Um, apologies to those that have, you know, have passed that very, very basic apologies, uh, because again, um, we might bore you, right? When we get to that very basic and you be like, ah, which one be this ones now? Yes, the essence is to get those that are, you know, that are, Probably this is the very first time they are seeing these things to make sense of these things. And that will really help to ensure that they gain the confidence needed to approach SQL. Okay. Once you gain the confidence, you can now soar. You can do anything you want to do. So let's go to the those that have uh, errors. Um, please, if you have an error, can you raise your hand? Raise your hand if you have an error that has not been addressed. An error message or you got stuck. It has not been addressed, and you just want you want to speak to help which make sense of your challenge, and of course, which will throw some light. I will probably take like about three or four, um, and of course, we now make some progress. Okay, um, one second, guys. Okay, Debbie, Debbie, please go for it. Please make it brief. Okay, make it brief because of time. Yeah, could you just scroll up? I think I I got lost. Uh, somewhere uh, uh, where you had the drop table test. Could you just explain what you did? Like, I understand that the, the first error, we go, uh, we got the first error when you ran it for a second time. So it sort of copied that and could not go back. But then I just saw you go up and add the, uh, uh, the word, that hashtag. And now I, I, I got lost from there on that. So I don't okay. know. Yeah. All right, what I, I was the query I sent through. If anybody has run it the way it was sent through, you're not gonna get an error. But where people got an error is they ran the the into statement the first time. And when they ran it the second time, it complained to just say, where you're telling me to put something there, where you're telling me to put there, there is already something like that in there. So what I have just done here was to just explain that error. I said, okay, first of all, remove what was in there, which was the drop table statement, and then rerun it again. If I run this again, you're gonna see that same error. You see, you're gonna see that error. Say, the data the, there is already an object that is named test in the database. So once it is there, what you would have done is if it tells you there's already an object that is named there, then what you now need to do is you try and check what is inside that test. You run a select from test and, and you're gonna say it. Then if it's what you want, you can continue. If it's not, if if this is a different test that at the database you have inherited or something, and you want to do that, you can remove the object by saying drop table and you remove it. So that is just what I try to explain. Okay, so if what you would do is to click um, is to use drop table if you don't want that particular object. But if yes. you want it, you proceed. But if you don't, then you click on drop table. That that for sure will be will be a bit hard for those that are just starting out that don't even understand what the meaning of drop table means, right? Yeah. And of course, you know, uh, one thing about SQL, uh, many look at SQL like coding, and the mindset with many as well is that oh, this thing is anything anything like this, man. Make I no go do something way go scatter the system or that kind of mindset. So uh, there's that little bit of fear factor, which I believe gradually at the end of this program, uh, most of us will be able to summon those fear factors and be able to uh, make progress. Debbie, does that make sense to you? Yeah, thank you so much. Excellent. Right. So um, let's move quickly to the next uh, question, please. Uh, Olola De, please go for Olola De, go for okay. it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, I got stopped where um, the query that says um, person dot person, like select from person dot person, where last name is Duffy. Yes. So yeah, that is this. 
Yeah, the... that is actually, yeah. If I just run it, that is it. So, okay. Then after that, I left that. I left it and went to anyone that does not do, I just leave it and go to another one. So I got stuck. I did some other ones after that that did. So I got stuck again at update test where, I mean, set name. I don't actually know whether that update test set name is um, supposed to be the same line or it should be copied the same way you wrote it because it's written a uh -huh, like that. Yeah, what I, I actually did was for you to run it exactly the same way. We're going to get into those things today. The essence of the assignment was for you to get used to to just try out on the environment and how to execute and run a code. Then uh, we're going to get to update insert statement and all of that. We're going to teach it today. Okay. So, so if you want to see them like this written together, yes. you need to execute it at the same time like this. I have run it okay. because there is no object. There is nothing again because I've changed the, the the I have changed the data analyst to a business analyst, it will not tell you is zero rows that is recorded, but okay. it's going to run. Then I don't quite understand the later part of the assignment that says um, return all columns and rows purchasing, purchase order, edge table, number two, return vendor. I don't understand how we're supposed to go with okay. that. Okay, well, we're going to get into that, but once it says return all, is yes. this. So this statement is actually says, Select this asterisk is all. Okay. okay. Like I said, we just wanted you to be able to open your screen like this, execute the code. When we now get today, we're going to be explaining to you in statement, update statement, and then you'll not be able to relate to what you have already done. But okay. if you have been able to open to this environment, get yes. to the database or one or two codes, I think yeah. you are fine. Yes, okay. I was able to do some. Then are we also going to treat, like you said, create an SQL file, save it with your name. I don't know how to do that soon. Okay, once SQL file, save it with your name, is this yeah. thing that I have written now? Yes. So you just go to file and you just say, save your name on your machine. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. 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 Fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's some good um good questions there. Um, uh, guys, we're gonna we're gonna be switching this back to you know the uh <clears throat> to to a further aspect of the program to, but again, I, I can see so many hands up. Uh, Don Moses, you have you have a question that has not been answered already. Um, yeah, my question is in the last part of the assignment, which it says a return purchase order list where status for and the list should be ordered by order date. So I was able to make sense of uh, number one and two, but that three, that's where I got stuck. So I almost done with the assignment, but that I couldn't <laughs> translate that into the query. So, I think after today's class, most of these questions will be answered. Yeah, excellent, okay. yeah. Ex excellent, fantastic. So yeah. we might we might just um, you know uh, let me get one more lady. You know I, I like getting the ladies to talk more. Uh, for last day, please uh, you are the last person to ask the question. Then we now uh, switch back into into. But I love this approach. You know, getting you guys to try this out. Then of course we now go into explanation. Then into the main class that should have explained this in the first place then you can now begin to connect the dots. So for those of us that are freaking out and say, hey, these guys, are they speaking German or, or, or Latin here? Please, just, just calm down. We'll get to the point where you all understand everything, okay? For Russia, then please go for it. Make it brief, please. Okay, good evening. So for me, I couldn't even run the queries because um, under my change connection, I just saw select um, database and there was no option to select from. So I got confused. So I'm suspecting that probably I didn't install right or maybe I'm doing something wrong because I couldn't even proceed from that point. Do you want to share your screen? Yeah, sure. I'm 
Are you able to share real quick? Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, Uche, do you want to stop sharing? Okay, all right. So, yes, my screen. This okay. part just okay. is selected. Click there, there, click there. I'm clicking. Or do I need to type in? No, okay. Click on connect database. Click on connect. Yes. Okay. Okay. First of all is a, okay. Click cancel. Okay. Um, okay. You need to call, we need to copy the server name. Okay. You see on top on your left side, you're going to see local host. Yes. Right click on it. Okay. Have you tried clicking and on say connect? edit connection? Okay. Okay, copy that thing there that say local host express. Copy it. Okay. Okay, You're copy done. it. Click cancel. And then go to connect. I think you can just click on connect. Oh yeah. Paste it there. I say connect. Okay. All right, go back to the database. No, no, go back to where you're gonna see masters there. Yeah. Go to master. Mm -hmm. If you click on it, you're gonna see 2017 is fine. It, okay. it just your house is not the same house I have. Your okay. number is different. You understand this is a book, click there. Okay. Okay, and go back to the queries. No, that's the assignment, right? Okay, click on the queries on top. Yeah, that circle one. You see the circle one on top? Yes. One. Click on it. Okay. Okay, okay that is just the query that you have. There, you now need to go. Okay, open this adventure works. By the left, no, by the left, go to your left. Expand it, see that arrow there, okay? Open on the table, expand the table, okay? You're gonna see person's person, okay? Have you seen it? Okay, yeah. right click on it. And just say select top 1000. Okay. All right, so you can now just remove every other thing from top. From that place that it says stop, um, where it says select top on the query okay. that is yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, after the select, after the select, okay. from, from top there, select it and delete it. No, not the select, from the top, after the top. After okay. select, you highlight from there. Okay. Go down, go down, delete all the whole columns, and then you just put asterisk as all. Okay, no, 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 don't remove the main table. Just, just stop from the second to the last line. Okay. I like to the second to the last line. Okay. Yes, press delete. Okay. Remove the top. Delete the top and press asterisk like times. Say times. Okay, make space between the select and the times. All right, run it. It gives you, it brings you a result set. Okay. Okay. Is that not okay? It will bring your result set. So you can still use the 2017 database. Why we did the asterisk is this. Imagine if you have 200 columns or you have not even 200 columns, you have 30 columns on a table. Are you going to write all of them, type all of them one by one, one by one? So that is just why I said delete it and just put the asterisk. So the, the asterisk in is all, but when we get it into today's class, uh, Seslu is gonna explain all that.
okay. in more detail. Excellent, excellent. Thanks for a lot. lot. Yeah, for us, sure this was helpful, right? Yes, 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 very helpful. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, you can stop sharing now. Okay. Fantastic. All right, great, great. Uh, I, lo I love, I love, the, I love the participation. It shows that we tried this. Like the statistics we got was not just, you know, people just answering. Many of you really try this because when you try something, that is when you're able to uncover gaps, errors, and you can now ask questions. And that is the essence of this. Make it engaging, make it participatory. Uh, really impressed with all of you. Okay, Sesu, let's take it now. Um, let's take it away. We are done with the assignment. I believe most of the questions have been answered already. If there are some that have not been answered, Please, guys, on the Telegram. Let's continue that conversation on the Telegram. Now, Sesu is going to now take it away by trying to, you know, explain things in a very granular way, uh, so that we can now begin to understand all those, all those um, uh, DML statements and so on and so forth. Uh, Sesu, are you still here? I am. Can you guys okay. hear me? Yes, we can. Please take it away. All right, then let's. And I'm I'm sure most of the questions that have not been answered at the end of this class. It will be it will be a thing of the past. So let can you guys? Yeah, it's still coming. Okay. Sesu. Sesu, can you hear me? Sesu, can you hear me? It's like we are having a bit of a network. Um... Let's give him. Let's give him a few seconds, guys. Okay, yes, we can see your screen now. Sesu, are you there? All right, for some reason, I think it threw me out. And, um... Yeah, we can hear you now. All right, so. Yeah, okay, please take it away. Okay. All right, so we're going to start from the basics, at least from after a successful installation. So I want us to follow through. So the first part of this class, we're going to get to understand how to use our ID. We're going to understand the different yes, parts yes. of our ID. Can so, you guys hear me? Your yes. screen. Sorry? Your presentation. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not coming up with the presentation. For, my screen is blank, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's the intention. So there are... Possibly after installation, there are many ways you can access your Azure Data Studio, right? You can search to get access to it. You can also pin it on your taskbar, which is what I usually do for most of the apps that I uh, tend to use quite often. Right, so I have my ID up. So because I've connected to so many other databases, and even like Uche explained, you can see all the databases on the left. So if you're trying to connect to a new database, most times you move, if you move your mouse over the icons, they'll tell you exactly what this icons can do, right? You can see a new connection. So if I click on a new connection, it gives me, it pops up this window on the right, giving me the interface to impute the different thing, information that I, uh, I need. Uh, one of the major challenges people had during the installation was to impute what their connection string. Right, so if you see there are two possible ways you can do that using parameters and using a connection string. In the example, I I asked users to use um, the parameters option because after the installation, you get a whole long connection string, right? And you can copy out just the value of the server. So if I click, because I already have a couple of connections here available and I click on one, it automatically fills up that information. So you can see that the server value is just localhost then backward slash SQL server express. It depends on the, it depends on your own installation. Most people, if you're installing for the first time, you would have localhost and SQL express without the zero two. 
right? So once I've imputed this, then I can click on connect. And once that automatically connects on the left pane, you can see that I have this in green and I have my folders expanded. So just like Uche explained, it's like your house, right? And you open your house, you have different rooms. Also, if you look at it, it's like your email, right? If you go to Outlook, you open Outlook, you can have access to what your different mails, which are your data, which is like your database. And you can have more than one email on your Outlook, right? And once you open your database, then you have access to what this folder. These folders represent your database object, like we talked about. We talked about um, tables, we talked about views, and we're going to be um, talking a lot more about them in depth, right? And when I expand my tables, I would actually see the different options that I have, the different tables that I have in my database. So I also want to quickly, before we move forward, explain something about schemas. If you can take a look at the list of table names we have here, you can see that there's also, here we have dbo.annual report pivoted. There's always a dot in between the table names. What exactly is that? So Uche gave you a highlight that this is called what, a schema. So in your house, you have a lot of rooms, right? And sometimes you have the master's bedroom where you don't want your kids to go in all the time. So you can create some restrictions. So you might have different floors in your house. The ground floor might strictly be for visitors and then the up floor might be for um, people who live in the house, right? So that's the way schemas work. So you can group your tables into different compartments called schemas. And then you can even go as far as granting permission to users to access specific schemas. A typical example in the database tables we are looking at here is the human resource department, right? The human resource department here will have its own schema where we have human resource department, human resource employee. So all the tables within this human resource schema, you might want to prevent other users from even seeing it down to even a lot of your um, database administrators. Why? Maybe because you don't want someone else to go and see the next person's salary and things like that. So those are some of the reasons why we have schema in the database. The DBO is referred to as the default schema. So if I create a new table and I don't specify a schema, it automatically adds it to a schema called the DBO schema. So in our, in our server, we have the database folder where we have our different databases. Inside our database, we have different database objects. And one of the objects is what it's tables. And then Inside the table, we now have a list of tables, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. Today, we want to start from the basics. We want to focus on data manipulation language and then see how we can what, manipulate data stored in our database tables, right? So like Uche explained, there are many things you can do. For instance, today we'll be, we'll be working a lot with the person dot person table. So you see that this person is just in what the person schema. If I right click on this, I can see the option of select top 1000. If I click on select top 1000, it's going to open a new window. So if you look on the left here, this is, these are like just like tabs, right? I can say no. These are different tabs. You can close all your tabs, right? And you can have many tabs. It's like having Excel workbooks or rather work, yeah, Excel worksheets in an Excel workbook. So that's exactly what the tabs are like. So, I can right click on person dot person and say select top 1000 and it will generate a select query for me. I can now go further into that and then manipulate that query. That's one option. Uh, 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 Senslo, let me just tell them something. Sorry, okay. Okay. guys, right? Yeah. That Senslo is explaining. In your family, in your father's house, you're not going to have two people bearing the same name. You understand if your name is patience and your name is patience uh, at the Kunle, none of your sisters would your father name again patience at the Kunle because nobody, if somebody comes to the house and he's looking for patience at the Kunle, there are two of you, so it wouldn't happen. So the schema and the table is like your first name and your surname, but you can still go to some other person's house. And you're gonna have, uh, um, you're gonna have uh, 
Uchechuku patients. It's possible. You are still going to have a Dekunle. You are still going to have some other that Dekunle Michael. But in a particular house, you cannot have two people with the same first name and surname. So the person you see there is the surname and the other one is the first name. So in a table, you cannot have two of them at the same table, but you can have them or no at the same database, but you can have them on different databases. Yeah, thank you for that. Right, so there are many options, right? You can right click and then you can do a select top 1000 and then you generate, it, it will open a new tab for you and quickly generate the initial select statement for you. And something else Uche mentioned about selecting all the rows, right? So because of that, by default, it is going to generate just the first top 1000 because it doesn't want to put that pressure on the server. But this is my own favorite way of writing the SQL statement is starting it from scratch, right? And you can do that by going to file and then new query, similar to the way you go to um, Microsoft Word and go to your file and then open a new document. So a new query automatically opens a tab, right? You can see that it has opened a tab for me and then has given me, automatically even given me, there's a run option, there's a cancel option, and then you automatically connected me to the Adventure Works 2017 by default because that is the, the um, server that I have open, right? But if I click on this drop down, it can give me the options of all the other databases that I have under my Adventure Works. So if you take a look at this, this is what the typical window would be like, right? And you can then write your SQL statement here. Also, this is like a regular file, like a Microsoft Word file. So if I write this query and I want to save that query so that I can use it tomorrow, all I need to do is my normal control S, right? Just like Microsoft Word. And I can come in anywhere to my desktop. And if you see, it's saving the type as a what? SQL file. So I can give it a name, right? I can call it SESU. Maybe SESU1 and save it on my desktop, right? And once I click on save, it's going to save this on my desktop as a CSU1 file. So I can close it. I can now go to file and then I can go to open file. Just the way you do in Microsoft Word. It's virtually the same thing. So I have that on my desktop and I have it here. So I can click on this and click on open. And it opens up the same file for me, right? and gives me the option to write my query. So for now, um, our main focus when you open a query window should be this down to where you have the database selected. Estimated query plan, and these are some advanced um, query options that you we might, we might not get to take a look at for now. But our main focus now is what the run button, which is like our green button to run a query. And then we have the disconnect if you want to disconnect and let it connect to another database. And we're going to start with our typical SQL queries. Another cool thing about um, Azure Data Studio or integrated development environment generally is they have something called line numbers that is good to take note of. So anytime you're trying to make a reference, you see like people came up and were trying to make a reference to where they had errors in their query, you can say, okay, make go to line number two, right? And it's easy for anyone looking at that to know exactly where to go and find a specific query. And, you know, gradually the journey starts. Remember we talked about SQL and we said it's basically like writing English language. Our focus today is going to be basically on data manipulation languages, right? So if you look at um, our SQL uh, our data, the data is saved in form of tables. So what are we manipulating? Our focus is manipulating the columns, manipulating the rows, right? Filtering out, putting them together, making different changes to the different values to present it in a format that we desire or in a format that um, has been requested of us. So the basic select segment, I'm sure after going through the assignment, we are all familiar with it, right? Then you can see that I've started typing select and I get something like a helper 
which is called which is referred to as intelligence. If I start typing and I see that the blue mark is on um, the field I want, I can hit my tab key and then it will complete it for me. So I'm saying select and I can say asterisk from person. You see that it's helping me out person dot person. So this is a basic, a first and basic um, simple SQL statement. So you can write your SQL statement on one line. We always make sure you have space between your syntaxes, right? You can have this on one line. And if I hit this and I hit my run button, it's going to run that query. And at the bottom of the, your taskbar, you can see it's telling you um, spaces, this, and for most, the most important thing for me here is the number of rows that have been returned. Here we have 19,972 rows. You're written your first SQL query. This is all there is to it, or maybe a little more, but I mean, it gets far more interesting from here. So right here, you can see that we have a table and these are the columns. And if you remember in our slide, all we talked about was um, um, columns and rows, right? And the columns would save the data for the different um, specific um, information about all the records. So for instance, here we have business entity ID. So the business entity ID for all the different records or the different persons. In this case, we have what, and this is like the person table. Then we have a person type, we have a name style, we have a title, first name, and then middle name, right? If you remember during uh, um during when we're talking about constraints, we talked about the different possible things, constraints that can be on the table. If you look at this table, you'll know that the first name is not missing anywhere, right? So this is most likely a not null, it's a not null constraint on this field. If you look at the title column, we have something here called null. Null because when they were filling this form or when they were inserting this data, they did not provide any value for title for Ken. So the concept behind null means null is not the same thing as, um, let's say, an empty string. An empty string is actually a character. So null means the absence of something where there actually can be something, right? So we, as we go on and we write queries and we move, we, we go ahead. You will get to understand so many other um, concepts behind um, constraints on. Uh, database tables. So we're going to be hovering a lot around the person the person table, but whatever query we write on here, you will definitely be able to write them the same queries against all these other tables. Today, we want to drive a point home. I have a table like this and my boss can make different demands of me, right? And not just my boss, maybe I want to see something. There are different things I want. Maybe I'm looking for a specific person. I should be able to filter this table to get that specific person I'm looking for. Maybe I'm looking for a group of people, right? So they are going to, we're going to take a look at criteria for filtering data by row. We're going to take a look at the criteria for returning just specific columns. Some of these columns might not mean anything to you, right? Somebody might come and just say, just give me the first name and the middle name of these people, or how many people are named Ken in this place. Those are the kind of things that you will get to um, will get to play around with. Then later we'll start taking a look at transactional data where we we'll also go into calculations and all that. Similar to what you can do in Excel, but I guarantee you that doing this with um, SQL is a lot easier once you get the hang of it. So before we start with the select statement, I also want to tell us some two things about um, another interesting thing about writing SQL statements. And it's not just for SQL, but it's for virtually every programming language. So personally, this is what happens to me. I forget a lot. So I come here and I write a query. Select a story from person is, you know, quite simple and straightforward. But what if I write a, a query that is seemingly complex and I've actually even forgotten why I even wrote that query? How do I remember, right? So we're going to talk about comments where you can put comments in your script, right? We have created an SQL file here. So this is our script. 
So in today's class, we're going to write queries here and we're going to build this script. And then at the end of the class, we'll share it in the Google Classroom for people who want to go over it and also review. So I'm writing my script now and I want to, um, I want to write a comment here so that when I come in tomorrow, and it's not just for you, but it's um, good coding practice that you add comments to your code so that even when someone else comes to review what you've done tomorrow, they don't need to pick up the phone and keep calling you. Oh, so why did you do this, right? So you can add comments. So in SQL, there are, Microsoft SQL Server, there are two basic ways, two basic types of comments you can add. You can add what's called single line comments, and then you can add something called multi-line comments. So it's easy. If I want to add a multi-line comment, then I use something, I put a syntax like this. Right, a forward slash asterisk, then at the end, where I want the comments to end, I'll put another asterisk. So just imagine that I come here, I type another statement, select. Now I'm going to use something, top 10 asterisk from, I'm still going to use person dot person just for consistency sake. So this query is just slightly different from this one. In this query, I've added and introduced a new syntax called top. I just want to get the top 10 of everything, right? So asterisk is referred to as a wildcard, which means what return all the columns. So select references the column while from references the table. So this is about personal preference, but I like to keep keywords on different lines. The same line works, different line would also work. Right, it just makes it cleaner. So I have this now with the select top 10, right? If I come to this and I click on this button, this button runs all the queries you have on the page. So I'll keep this, right? So this, I've done a select top 10 asterisk from person to person. If you come down to the bottom taskbar, you can see that it's returned what 10 rows. So this returned just only 10 rows. So what happens if I copy this out? I'm doing a control X to cut it and then I put it inside here. You can see that it's now highlighted in green. And if I run this query now, nothing happens, right? It just tells you command completed successfully, zero rows. Why? Because I've put everything inside my multi-line comment. If I take the two of them out, right, and I put it down here and I run it, you will see that we'll have two outputs. Once it finishes to run, you'll see that it's going to give us two outputs. Okay, it's still running. So this gives us 19,000 rows. Let me scroll down to see if I can see the second table. You can see that we have two tables here, right? This one just returns just 10, and then this one returns the whole 19,200 records. Why? Because I have, I clicked on the run button. So it's going to run all the queries I have. It's also sometimes, um, back in the days, you had to end your SQL query with a semicolon to show that that's the end of the query. But now using IDs like this, most times it doesn't really matter. So I have been able to what? We've been able to understand how we can what? Run. If I want to run just one of these queries then I can actually highlight the target area and then click on my run. If you move your cursor over run, it gives you, it should tell you, okay, if you can hit the F5 key on your keyboard. Also, it's like a shortcut key to be able to run that query. So because I've highlighted just this section and I've clicked on my run button, it's only going to retrieve this part of this part of the query. There are other options. Let's talk about single line comment. So single line comment uses just a double hyphen. So if I do this, it's going to what comment out everything on that line or everything after the after it. Because if I, for instance, bring this here. Let's introduce the where clause, for instance. 
I can say where business entity ID equals one. If I do this, so the where clause basically filters by what? Your row, as I'm sure you would have understood from the assignment. So if I highlight this query and I hit the run button, it returns just the single record I am looking for. If I put my single line comments here, then it turns, it negates this, right? So if I come to this place, I highlight just this line and I run it, it's going to now return everything. So that is basically how single line comments work, right? So single line comments, just two hyphens would work. While multi-line comments are what we, we can put anything within multi-line comments and they do um, it will comment that part of the code out. So I like to keep my I like to keep my code clean. You can also you can still use this on the same line. So something like this, right? So we're going to create, I can do this and say comment. Uh, pardon my turn. So I'm going to now use comments to break everything into different sections where, where we write the script. And then I'm going to highlight only what we need to go along as we write our script. So I'm going to talk about, um, so I'm going to now give um, different sections. So I'll call this basic column filtering. Don't mind my spelling. So I'm going to call this basic column filtering. So under this now, we're going to we're going to talk about how we can filter our query by columns. So let's start with that. So I'm going to hit this and bring it down, and then I'm going to take out my rear clause just for simplicity's sake. So like we talked we, we we talked about the select asterisk pulled everything from the database. It pulled what all the columns. So I'm going to now add notes. I can now add notes, select references, the column, right? While from references, the object or table in this case. So let's just, let's leave it as table. So while you're also writing your own queries, you can, you can build out notes. This is how you build out your own cheat sheet, right? And at the end of the day, anytime you've forgotten something, you can quickly run back and make a reference. So the select asterisk will typically bring out all the columns, right? But what if you actually want to just pick specific columns for your report? So what I typically do most times also is the first time I, first thing I do is I do a select asterisk so that I can actually visually see the columns that I need. Then I can now go in and then title, right? And then I separate with a comma, first name. I have intelligence, it's kind of cool working for me. Then middle name, then last name. So with this now, if I run this query, this is going to filter out this specific columns that I require, right? But it has, it has brought out, it's still the same 19,972 rows. Why? Because I uh, are filtering what only by columns. These are the specific columns that I want to see. If I want to see business entity ID, I can add it, right? All you need to do is separate them by comma. Separate them by comma. So these are some of the basic things you can do with column filtering. So I'll come back to column filtering, right? But I also want to talk about, there are so many other things we can do when, we, when it comes to the column, right? What if I want to bring first name and middle name together into one column? Those are some of the kind of manipulations that you can do at the column level. So we'll come back to that, but I also want us to take a look at um, row filtering. So I'll, I can copy this. So that's the whole idea now is what I'm trying to build out a script. Right, and I can do my control S to save it at any point in time. Yeah, that's something really cool with Azure Data Studio. 
Anytime you see at the top here, you see this circle, it means that that file is not yet saved, right? So if I do a control S now, you can see that it has turned into an X. These are some of the things you will get familiar with once you start playing around with the ID, you know, just like you do on Facebook and no. Everywhere is so quiet. I just want to check and see if you guys can hear me and we are together. Even if it's a thumbs up or a hands up. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right then, okay. So we're we'll now down to basic row filtering. So just like we can filter by our columns, we can also determine the number of rows that we want to return, right? And in the row filtering, there are many different types of operators we can use. So under basic row filtering, I'm going to now talk about uh, different ways that we can filter our rows. So I'll, um, I would introduce this, right? There are many ways we can filter using comparison operators. The comparison operators is like our normal uh, mathematics, right? And I'm just going to come up here and copy the same thing and bring it down for take off. So I'll highlight it first and I'll run it. Let's see what we have. So someone comes and says, ah, I want to know everyone who has first name Ken, a typical scenario. At the end of the day, I'm using basic scenarios, but in a real work environment, you'll be left to your imagination, right? Whatever you can think of and however you want to manipulate that data, you will be able to do it once you get this basic and foundational knowledge. So in this case now, I want to filter with um, Maybe I want to find everyone who has a first name, Ken, right? That is where we introduce the where clause. So the where clause basically is saying where, um, now I can say first name equals to Ken. Now I can type in Ken. Another cool thing about SQL Server, which you would not find in other programming languages or in core programming languages, that it's case insensitive. So if you can see, I've typed in Ken here, all in small letter. It doesn't matter if Ken is saved in um, a bigger letter. Although databases can be configured to be case sensitive, it's called um, collision. But by default, SQL Server is configured to be case insensitive. But your statements, like your select, can be in lower case, can be in upper case. If you see the statements which I wrote, keys were even in lower case. And your column names also can be in lower case or upper case. It really doesn't matter. So it's that cool, right? It's that forgiving. In other languages, you can't even write, if you write, create a variable with a lower case, you must also, anytime you need to reference it, you must specify that specific case. So if I, so now I'm going to highlight just this section of the code because this is what I want to run, right? And I'll hit my run button. And it has returned all the people with what? First name, Ken. And if you look down here, you see that we have just what? Six rows. We have just six rows. And then what if I want to? So now here's the trick. I'm going to be using comments. I don't, I don't know if this will confuse some of, okay, but let me leave that at, for now. What if I say, I want to bring everyone else except um, people with the name Ken then I use this option, right? This is means not equal, to, saying is not equals to Ken. I highlight this and I run it and it gives everyone except Ken. And if you see, we have 19,966. If you add it to the number of Ken, then we're going to get that total number because it's mutually exclusive, right? So we've talked about equals to, we've talked about not equals to, then, most this greater than, less than, and all these mostly work with numerical uh, data. Here we have business entity ID, it's a numerical data, right? Or it works with like date time data also, right? So I can say we have business entity ID, for instance, is greater than five. 
So notice the difference. In SQL um, um, server and in even most programming languages, when you're writing a numerical value, you don't put it in single quotes. It stands on its own. But when you're writing um, a string value or a text value, then you have to make sure it is inside single quotes. So in this case now, I have five. So all I'm saying is what? Bring up everybody whose business entity ID is greater than five. You can see that this starts from what? Six and down to the end. So this is um, one of the ways you can do. And then we have the greater than or equals to, right? Is it, is it, is it after it? If I run this now, it's saying what? It's going to start from five because I said greater than or equals to five. So this is like a basic um, mathematical uh, concept, right? So you can use these values to filter your rows. Then we have something else also referred to as conditional operators. So these are some of the conditional operators that we can also uh, play around with. So in conditional operators, we have like, we have in, then we have between, right? Okay, I repeated. So the between comes with something like and. So let me put this together. So you can also use this to filter um your rows and it's interesting because you can see that the equals to can be a little bit rigid especially when it comes to and when it comes to string values or text values but you can also use like for the same thing right you can also use like for string values so let's say we have um select asterisk from there's another table called purchasing. Let's just introduce a new table, right? And then purchasing the purchase order detail. We'll talk a little more about this table in depth later. But I just want to introduce um, this new table. Or do I use the purchase order header? Let me use the purchase order header. Purchase order header. So it's about the table. The table just holds information about purchases that have been made. So let's just run an asterisk to see what a table looks like. So it has just the purchase order ID, revision status, employee ID. This is probably the employee that um, purchased it. The vendor ID is probably the vendor they bought it from. Shipping method, order date, ship date. If you look at this, this is closely the same thing with what you get when you buy things on Amazon, right? There's an order date, they'll have a ship date and um, the like. The, we want to take a look at using things like the like operator. But the like operator works better with string values. Here we have more of numerical and then date values. So let's come back to our person dot person. We'll come back to this um, this table. So we have business entity ID. Title, first name, middle name, last name from person dot person, and we want to use like. So we can use the we can use like in the same way. Where, let's say first name, like Ken, just like what we did the other time. We had equals to Ken, so like Ken would also work. Like Ken would also work, it gives us the same um, output. But the like is a little more interesting, or it gets a little more interesting. And we'll talk about that shortly. Because with like, you'll be able to implement a couple of wildcards to do a little bit more detailed filtering. So let's talk about in. In simply means including. 
So I'll give you a typical example. Let me highlight just this. Just see that I've ignored my rear clause. And I run this. So I've gotten everything. So let's say I want to get people with first name Ken and let's say Rob. Right. And I come down here. What I'll do is I'll copy out the query and bring down another one so that we can have a script with all the different examples. So I'll say where first name includes. So there's a difference in syntax. So include now, I'll open a bracket and then I'll specify the values inside that bracket separated by a comma. So this is just what this is just what the rule says, right? So it's just to understand it. Uh, so now I can say include Ken. You see that this will still work the same, right? This will still give us the same output. But the difference here is this now gives us the power to add more than one. So I can now put a comma and put this another quote and say, um, we had Rob, right? I can now say Rob. So with using the in clause, I'll be able to filter in a little more detail. So now I have Rob and Ken. And the list goes on. So I can put another comma and add another name and add another filter criteria. Right. So just a quick recap. Basically, we're taking a look at what column filtering, and then we're taking a look at our row filtering. I just like to do this to demarcate the sections. So it, it's inside the comments, so it doesn't really matter. Right. So I'll do this. And this, just so that we can separate a different section. So just another Azure Data Studio gives us something also that's very cool that we we had this in other um programming language, but it's called region. So you can actually create a region. For instance, when you're writing a lot of scripts and you want to I can have something like this and call it a region, right? Well, let me do this. So if I call this a region, and then at the end of it, I'll do the same thing. And then I'll put the hash and I'll say end region. So the cool thing about this is I can actually come here now and compress everything. Right. So if you have a long running script, sometimes you want to um, make it less visible. So we can make use of what region. So let me make a region now out of the section so that as we move along, we can actually compress uh, compress our scripts. So I'll come down here and do the same thing. End region. So now once we come back, we can always expand a specific region to work with. It's about personal preference, but you see how clean and cool this can be, right? So we're back to using filter. So we've talked about like, we've talked about in, and then we're going to talk about between. We'll come back to like much later because it's, it's a little more interesting when we play around with um, like. So, for this, I'm going to use um let's use the same thing. I'll copy this, I'll bring it down here. Right. So we have business entity ID. I'm going to comment this out for now and run just my query and let's see what we have. So you might want to pull out a report, right? Of um business entity IDs between specific numbers. So you can say, let's say between one and 10, between five and 15, right? So those are the kind of scenarios that the between comes in where, where business entity ID 
right? I can now say between five, remember I said when you're using numbers, you don't need to put the quotes, right? And let's say 15. I can highlight this and then run the query. So you can see that it's going to be between what? Five and then 15, right? And includes the five and includes the 15. So there's um, another cool thing about SQL is it depends on what your ideas and how you want to write your queries, but there are many ways that you can get the same output. Some could be more efficient than others, but I'm going to, this is going to be part of today's, one of our assignments today, let me put it here. So the assignment will be that I want us to be able to use some of the filterings we have talked about to, to write this same query, right? So you we're going to use a logical operator, use a comparison operator, use a comparison operator, or use comparison operator. Operators to get same output. So there are so many different ways that you'll be able to play around with what the different um, operators. So while there are so many other operators, and if you look at the slide, I think I have that in one of the pages on the slide, yeah, where we talk about the different operators also. So you can go over it, you can go over to W3 schools where I shared the link to also look at um, the options to use them in a little more uh, detail. So there are so many other interesting um, operators that we, we can look at. And um, let me talk about this logical operators. So let's talk about logical operators. I'm going to put this inside. So using logical operators. So these are basically the types of logical operators you can find, and, or, any, and all. For the purpose of today's class, I'm going to talk about and, and I'm going to talk about or, right? This enables us to be able to chain our different um, row selection criteria or criteria. So imagine you wanted to um, get um, have different criteria. For instance, you're looking for people who have a first name of Gail, or let's say have a first name of this and the last name of like specific um, criteria. You'll be able to use some of these your operators to get them. So this is a typical example. Can use ten. I'm highlighting just this, where, and I run this right. So I've gotten four people with the first name of Ken. But what if I want to filter out um, some Ken Mayer, first name of Ken and last name of Mayer? I can actually add or change that condition with an and clause and last name equals mayor right so this is so when this is when you run this query against your database because you're using an and condition it is going to make sure that what the two um an and um, operator is going to make sure that the two conditions are met for for any row to be returned it checks so it will go into the first row and say is the first name ken yes and it will ask what well, is the last name maya if it's no then it will ignore it so if we run this query now you would see that it returns only two records why because it's checking to make sure that both criteria or both um, um yeah both, both, both criterion have been met 
right? So the basic difference between the R and the OR operator is that the OR operator will check for any of those conditions. So it's saying that it's either your first name is Ken or your last name is Maya for this to be returned. So if you run this, you would also see that this returns, it comes to the first row. Oh, the first name is Ken, but is the last name Maya? No, but it still returns it because you have an all condition, right? And it comes down, comes that to Dorothy, first name is Dorothy. It doesn't meet this criteria, but it meets this criteria, right? But because you have an all condition, it's going to return um, both of them. And then all, there's also another logical um, operator that I'll quickly talk about is, um, it's the bracket. I don't know how to put it, but you can also chain your condition inside a bracket. And um, if we remember our board mass in school, board mass always evaluates what you have inside the bracket first, right? So I'll, um, let, me, let, let me think of a quick, simple scenario that will drive this point home. So here we have first name Ken, or last name is Maya, right? And then I'll have another condition again, and I'll say, and middle name is not no. So I've used the opportunity to also introduce a new syntax, right? Which is, is not no all i'm saying is that what because middle name the meaning that the middle name should not be empty so if i run this you see that this 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 return the first name of ken or last name of maya and middle name is not no so if you look at this critically it returned it returned them um, it returned Maya, right? Maya's middle name is not null, but it returned Maya and then this middle name is null. So because this condition is basically checking not against any of this criteria. So let me try another trick now and see. Let me see if this works. Or you have put in the bracket between last name and uh, and and middle name and and not no, so that it should just be first name equals okay. Ken, yeah. Okay, and you put the bracket. Yeah. All After right. So, all. so let's okay. put the bracket and then do this. I'll copy this so that we compare the two queries. So let's run these two queries and let's see if it gives us something different. If we use the or, if we use the yeah. or, we're not gonna see the different, we'll put mm -hmm. and, and then change the middle one to or. Okay, let's try it. Mm -hmm. So we now, so we see the, so let's evaluate these two queries against our script. So the first one is saying, select business entity ID, title, first name, middle name, last name, from person to person, where first name equals to Ken, or last name equals to Maya, and middle name is not null, right? So with this query, it's going to evaluate just from left to right, right? Without any single criteria. But if you look at the second query, it's going to evaluate what we have inside the bracket first. And the first criteria in the bracket is that the first name has to be either Ken or Maya. Then after being either Ken or Maya, the middle name has to be not known. I'm sure we get, the, we get the idea. So that is how you can actually use your brackets to also um, chain your queries or map out the conditions of how 
you want your query to run, right? This is all dependent on your use case, right? First thing is, as a data analyst, you have to think through what you want your output to be, right? And then once you understand the different um, possibilities and capabilities of the different syntaxes, you can now use it to narrow down in getting exactly what you want. So um, don't worry, we're going to, we're building a script and we're going to share this script at the end of the class, right? We're going to share this script to be able to, for everyone to go over it and have like a fair understanding. We're going to chip in some assignments and then we're also going to be around to answer a couple of questions. So I, a quick few seconds overview of where we are so far, and then I'll talk about, so basically we've talked, we're, we're, we're trying to look at what basic column filtering and then basic row filtering. So let's talk about row. Well, let's not call it basic. Let's say row filtering because we, row filtering. So for the column filtering, we have taken a look at the two different possible ways we can filter our columns, right? And one of the ways we can filter our columns is through what using the select asterisk. So the select asterisk will return all the columns, right? So I can say select asterisk from person dot person. Person that person. I can now add a comment beside it. Returns all columns. Right? But if I have specific columns I'm trying to pull, then I'll need to specify those column names separated by a comma. Right? Then, before we move on, I also want to introduce us to two other things when it comes to um, managing columns. We'll talk about um, functions in detail, but there are different ways you can, um, so let's talk about concatenation. Concatenation. So concatenation basically means what? Joining um, records or joining values. So we'll talk about concatenation and aliases. So I'm going to copy this same column and bring it down here. Remember I talked about ETL, right? Let's say you're pulling data from a specific data source, pushing it into another database and you want that data the, the, the format that the data has been expected somewhere is entirely different, right? Maybe the first name and last name have been put together. So there are many ways you can do that using uh, SQL. So I'll leave the first name and then the last name here, and then I'll add a comma. And then I can do first name. You can use a plus to concatenate and last name. So let me run this query and let's see what our output will be. So we have gotten the first name and the last name, but personally, I think there are two problems here. One of the problems is that our column does not have a name, right? It's called no, there's no column name. And the second thing, the second um, problem here is the first name and the last name are, are, are joined together. We really don't want that. So there are a couple of ways that you can actually handle this, right? Which is just for you to think through it. When you want to, when, when you sometimes do, um, should I say derived columns? That's what we call derived columns. They're really, the system doesn't know the name to assign to it. So you can actually give it an alias. Giving it an alias, you can use the keyword ask. Let's call it full name. So I've called it as full name. As is a keyword that's saying you want to display this as full name. And you don't necessarily have to put it. 
it will still work, but I like to keep my code clean. So I will always use the ask keyword. So that's what's referred to as what aliases. And you you don't you can only you don't only need to do that for calculated columns. Now we have full names. Even even a specific column, if you don't like the way it's written, you can actually give it an alias. Let's say you're building in databases. Most times when we create tables, we don't give spaces between column names, right? And sometimes you might want to generate a report in Excel, and you, your boss will not understand when he sees a specific value like that, right? So you can actually is it double quotes. You can actually do something like this. Last name. Let me try and see if it works. So it works. So you see that we have what a last name, and there are many ways you can do this in SQL. You can give it an alias, and then with this you can actually put this um, a space, and then what generate your reports. And then on a side note, why right, there are so many cool things you can do with on on the right hand pane here. You see that I have different options to save your query result as a CSV. You can save as Excel, you can save as a JSON, data XML, and then what well, you can work out with chat. These are things you can actually play around with later. But I just thought it would be cool for you to know that you can actually do that, save as Excel. So this will what generate an Excel sheet out of your query output. So basically we've talked about concatenation and we've talked about aliases in addition to managing our um, columns or manipulating our columns to bring out the results. So I'll, I'll leave this for you to figure out. It's quite easy. Remember that you can concatenate as many things as you want, right? All you need to do is specify a plus and plus and plus. So if you want to get the first name, full name separated by um, first name and a space there, it's easy, right? You should just be able to add another concatenation and concatenate something. There are many other ways you can also do concatenation. So we will also get to the point where we'll talk about functions in um, SQL Server or in databases generally. So one of the things um, the database specific companies do is now they create some tools to make some of the job easier or faster for you. So a function is generally something that might take an input and then returns an output. It's like a basic unit of programming. And any almost every language, the way the functions are written is they write the function name and then there's a bracket after it. So another way we can use, do concatenation is using the concat function. You can see that after typing con, it has come up, right? If I do hit my tab key, it's going to bring it with a bracket. So if I move my mouse over it, it will tell me what's happening, right? It's a built-in function and it what re it requires an ex two ex at least two arguments. That means you have to pass like two parameters, and it's just basically going to do the same thing with what we have above. So it takes in at least two parameters, at least because you can actually take in even more. So if I do this, right? So remember I'm using what a concat function, which is the same thing with what I have here or about the same thing. And if I run these two queries, right? It's going to give me the same output. It's going to give me the same output. So I'm leaving, separating the names as part of the assignment for us to go figure out when we get the hang of this script. So we've taken a look at a few things when it comes to basic column filtering. Let's quickly jump into, go back to our row filtering. So under our row filtering, we took a look at comparison operators. We took a look at conditional operators. We've taken a look at logical operators and then we took React and logical operator. So we're going to take a look at one more um, operator, which is the mathematical operator. That should be about the easiest of them all. But before we go into that, I told us I wanted to come back, to talk to us about the like operator. The like operator. The like operator is an amazing operator. It's one of the coolest 
that you will find in SQL. Why? Because it helps us further narrow down our role filtering, right? Because it uses um, certain things um, or certain constructs to call wildcard to help us filter out, filter our data, like to in, in a more deeper granularity. So in the scenario here now, I'll hit some space down and then I'll talk about this. So we have what we have first name like Ken. So let me introduce some wildcard. Let me introduce some wildcards to us. So we have a couple of um, constructs referred to as wildcards. This help us further um, filter our rules based on certain criteria. Because all we have been looking at is filtering role by let's say a name and all that. So what if I just want to see all the people whose first name starts with K, for instance, right? That's a little more um, detailed. We're not bringing in all the full names. So some of these operators help us to be able to carry out some of those kind of filtering. So I'll give us a typical example by copying this, right? And then bringing it down here. Give some space. So we make our code look clean. So now we have, we have first name like Ken and we want to start with what? Row, where start like K. If I do like K, it might not return anything. Right, because maybe there's nobody with a first name that starts with K, right? But I'm going to introduce the percentage character as a wildcard. So what this basically signifies is what one zero or many character. That means if there's just the K is going to return it. And if there's anything that starts with K and goes to even if it's a million characters, it's going to return it. So let's run this query quickly and then see what our output is. So you see that all these names start with K. We have about 1,255 records. And it, and it goes on and on. Um, I think I have a slide also that you can take a look at. Let me, let me, let's go over the slide quickly and then we'll come back to the different ways that we can use this. Current slide. So, in this slide, in, these are some of the wild cards that we can play around with when we are manipulating um, data in SQL. So, the percentage sign is the one we just took a look at, and it represents zero or more characters. So, the whole idea is if I add the light, use the light with the percentage sign in my where clause. If I say BL with the percentage sign, then it's going to return BL, right? Because we're saying zero or more characters. So if it finds BL in that column, it will return it. If it finds black, it will return it. If it finds blue, it will return it. And if it finds blob, it will return it because all of them start with what? BL. That's the first one. Then the second one is the underscore. This is actually an underscore. So the underscore represents a single character. So if I use the underscore in my like filter criteria and I have like H underscore T, then it's going to find hot. It's going to find hot. It's going to find heat. But it will not find home because home is not three characters. Home does not end with T, right? And home only starts with H. So basically, that is what the underscore does, underscore character. We'll run a couple of examples to see that. Then we have the square bracket. This represents any single character within the bracket. So if I have H with the square bracket and I have O and A, it's not OA, it's single character. So this is going to find hot because O is inside the bracket. So it's like H, O, Hot will pass. Hot would also pass because it's H A T. But heat would not pass because heat is not a single character inside the square bracket. Now, 
these are there are so many different use cases in your workplace in your filter requirements that you would need to narrow down or filter things down into this depth right so sometimes we one of the things we one of the major challenges we had back in firs when we were pulling um taxpayer data right so we we had some integration with banks right because we we're trying to track people who were making high volume transactions and not uh, remitting commensurate taxes. So sometimes we had a scenario where we get data from the bank, maybe in Excel and other data formats. Sometimes we had some integrations where they even push data to us over the network. And when the company goes to open an account, right? It can be like Max Nigeria Limited. And then with the bank, they'll put LTD. But when they come to register with FIRS, which is um, of no deliberate intention, they have limited, right? So how are we going to match these two records? It's, it, it, so with using those kind of wildcards, you can say, okay, if it finds LTD or if it finds limited, right? Or where the name is like match, then when we get that, it narrows down to maybe a fewer records and then sometimes you can get to do some manual check or you can even think up some very cool interesting queries that would filter and match those kind of records right so there are so many so many um use cases that you can think of you know to manipulate and we you know retrieve data in exactly the way you want then we have the carrot um sign the correct sign basically represents a character that is not in the bracket so it's just negating whatever you have in the bracket so you can see that if you have h with the current then it's everything in the bracket will not will, will be ignored so it's going to find heat but it's no longer going to find hot and hot because of the negation sign we have added inside the square bracket then the hyphen now different from the underscore represents what a range of character so sometimes we have this character in the bracket and instead of we don't want to put one character after the other so if they are within the same range for instance we have a to b if we have a to d then it's going to mean a b c and d right and it's going to filter about the same thing so it's going to find cat and it's going to find cbt but it will not find um cuts for instance so these are some of the basic wild cards we have right asterisk returns all the columns that is something we are more familiar with so let's come back to our code and take a little um play around with some of the wild cards like we've seen so this returns what can so what if i want to um find the second character that let's say well, let's say I, I'm thinking of um, a second character that starts with A. Remember, our underscore means what? One character. So in this in this case now, I'm saying the second character has to be A, and I don't care what appears after A. So if I run this query and it returns any result, I can now inspect to see that it's met all my criteria. You can see that the second character is A. Gail, Janice, David, Mary right and the same thing with the square bracket the um carrot and then our asterisk and then our hyphen so you can play around with those same characters let's say we want to find um gail now let me just copy this to the next line because our assignment for this week is going to be heavily on um, playing around with wildcards so I'm thinking of something. Let's say I want to return um, Gale. If I have a G, then I can have my square bracket, right? And in this square bracket, I can say, I want A, I want O, maybe E too. And then at the end, I can even say, let them be an asterisk. That means it has to start with G, the next character should be A, E, or O, and then whatever. So let's run this and see if it fetches anything for us. 
So we have Gabriel, Gabriel. We have Geoffrey, Gabriel, right? So you can see that we've been able to filter G, A, and G, E values. So these are some of the um, ways we can play around with what our wildcard. I know this this is easy, right? I'm sure you guys are enjoying and saying, yeah, isn't this all there is to SQL? This is actually all there is to it and more. So one of the last um, operators we'll talk about, we'll talk about a mathematical operator. What is what is what's the point of being a data analyst when you cannot play around with figures and money? Right? At the end of the day, it's about money, right? So mathematical operators help us to carry out mathematical operations on numerical columns. Now don't get confused. The plus operator was used for concatenation, right? Um yeah. so, sorry, sorry, let me let me chime in here. Um All right. yeah. Yeah, um, interesting, interesting, uh, interesting session uh, for sure. Uh, very, 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 very um, granular, like, you know, taking it from the very, very basics. Um, the, the, this, is, this is incredible, right? Um, I can see the feedback from the chat, you know, there's a lot of excitement. Um, in, in the way you gave the assignment the last time and, you know, some have dot, some cannot even define what is S, then Q, then L. And you are now asking them to do select, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they, you know, they are now wondering what is going on here. I thought, you know, this program <laughs> is supposed to be for beginners. Um, so it's great that we're able to do that. Um, let's, let's pack the mathematical operators uh, for, a, for a moment. Uh, okay. beca because of time, right? Oh, oh, and, yeah, uh, sure. and, I, and I know for sure that we've got some questions as well. Yeah. Um, you know, across board. So it would yeah. be great, especially if they are going to be having some assignments. Uh, it makes sense that anyone that have got some great areas, you know, they're able to ask questions and get clarifications um, ahead of that. So I think, um, and of course, trust me, uh, you've really done very good justice to some of this. But I can tell you as well that for some of, some of the, some of our participants, yeah. it's possible that they are ahead now, done the hot. If you understand what I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Olola Day, you know, smoke, smoke is already coming out from her forehead right now, you know. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, let's kind of pack the math operator for a moment and um, see how we can, you know, take some questions, guys. So you've got questions, uh, raise up your hand, please. Um, we're gonna get you to, you know, um, unmute yourself and ask your questions. Uh, remember, this is a practical class. So it, it makes sense that you're able to, if for example, there's something you want to show, uh, get ready with your, with, your, uh, with your screen so that once you're asked to share, you're able to share quickly, you know, without waste of too much time. Uh, before getting to that question, Remy, uh, I'm not sure if Remy is still here. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, please, can you share the um, Google, not Google, the YouTube link again, please? Okay. Um, I'm not sure why majority have not subscribed to the YouTube um, yet. Uh, this is something that is going to help us. We are getting so many emails from participants asking for recording, recording, recording. Um, it doesn't take more than more than more than ten seconds to click on that particular YouTube and subscribe and click on notification. Uh, we are going to pause. Uh, let me share that link. Uh, once the link is shared, we expect every one of you to subscribe. Um, if the subscription is not done, probably we'll just call it a night and everybody can go home. Um, so let's let's click on the link. The link has been shared right now. It doesn't take more than 10 seconds. Um, we sort of receiving so many emails. It makes sense for us to uh, do the right thing so that the operations team can focus on other things instead of responding to email about recording, recording. Please click on the link. It is being shared right now. Uh, look at the chat right now, everyone, please. Click on that link and subscribe to the YouTube page. Very important, please. Uh, you're gonna get recording there. And of course, all the other Black Tech related uh, information will also be shared uh, from time to time.
Um, okay, why you are doing that? I also want to mention that we've got programs, uh, data analytics program, which is a three months program. Um, Sesu, can you pause for a second? Can you stop sharing? Sesu, are you there? Okay, good. Yeah, because there are also a lot of uh, feedback and requests um, from folks as well that are looking at, um, you know, delving into data analytics. Like you want to go into the deeper side of data analytics. We've got questions across borders since last week as well. So there's a program coming up and that program is on the 17th, 17th of this month. And the program focuses on deeper, of course, granular, SQL, and of course, you can also uncover more uh, capabilities. In addition to that, there's Excel as well. Very important. You cannot be a data analyst or you want to go into analytical without use of Excel. Advanced Excel is going to be covered in that class. SQL, then you have Power BI for data visualization. For some of us that like that, I uh, talk about uh, bar chart, pie chart, creating of dashboards and stuff like that. You will see the power of Power BI on how that can be used. Of course, you have a Tableau or Power BI, they're all data visualizations. Then Python programming is also part of it as well. After that, you have the capstone, which is like a project that you also going to participate in. And the beauty of this project is that you will be uploading that project on GitHub. GitHub is an online repository where you can upload your project, build your portfolio where you can showcase to hiring managers. Some of our past students are getting jobs simply because they are able to showcase what they have done to hiring managers. It's important. These days calls for creativity. You have an interview, it's not just going to the interview to just talk, talk, talk. You want to share something. The question that hiring manager asked the lady, can you tell me the data analytics project that you have worked on in the past? What she did, she simply shared her screen open her GitHub and walk through the black tech project she did. She got the job. The feedback from the recruiter after that was, there were five people to be hired, but the hiring manager chose you because of your creativity. What is the creativity? She was able to share her screen, walk the man through the Power BI and SQL project she did in black, at black tech program. Fantastic. Let's try as much as possible to think from those perspectives. Time has passed where you have to do a lot of theory, 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 theory. And that is why today, all our programs are black tech, they are must be hands-on. It's about hands-on to develop your skills and capability. That helps you. Enough of certificate. Too much certificate everywhere, but people are looking for jobs. So why are we chasing for certificate? Let's start to build skills and capability that will set us apart to get the jobs we need. So that is what this data analytics program is set to do. 17th of this month, very, very soon. Uh, it's going to start 17th of this month, okay? If you are interested in this, for those that are participating in this, you will be getting $200 discount. If you are participating in this, $200. What you need to do, send email to info at blacktechhub.org. This is the email address. I mentioned that you are part of the SQL for tech program and you are interested in the three months, that three and a half months data analytics program and a $200 discount has been extended to you. Send an email and the team will respond to you with the exact amount you are gonna be paying minus the $200. For those that are interested, this is a gift we are further giving to the black community. Um, and again, to mention we have a masterclass tomorrow. The master class is on Power BI. Today we are looking at you know SQL. Tomorrow we have a master class for two hours. It's going to focus on Power BI. How can you use Power BI to create dashboards and fine looking you know reports? That is the master class tomorrow. The link is going to be posted on the on the chat as well. Do where to register? It's free. Tomorrow class on Power BI. Okay, make sure you register as well. Come and learn so that you expand your horizon. See capabilities on things that are, and different tools that you can leverage to advance your skills, okay? All right, thanks for listening to that. Let me drop the 
Power BI registration as well. Check the chat right now. It's there and it's free. Make sure you attend tomorrow class on Power BI as well. Some of us have heard of Power BI. You probably don't know how to use it, what is useful. Coming tomorrow and you'll learn a lot, okay? All right, let me stop here now. Let's move quickly to the questions. I've seen a couple of hands up. Let's start with uh, Grace. Ladies first, right? Uh, Grace, please, unmute yourself and go for it, please. Uh, please, because of time, and we need to accommodate, uh, see how we can accommodate um, like everyone, make sure you just go straight to the point. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, my question is for Seiso. Seiso, thank you for a very fantastically delivered session. Um, I just have a situation with how to get my, so when I, when I put in my lines of code, Say I go select and I try to type in business entity ID. I'm not able to have the drop down for business entity ID show up for me. So I'm wondering if there's any tip to fix that. Because I always have to like type the full name for me to use that um, command. Okay, so um, I will think at the top um, hand corner, do you have the data, correct database selected? Yes, I do. Or I'm do sharing you, my screen right you now. You want to share your screen? Okay, All right, perfect. Yeah. Yes, I'm sharing my screen. So if I do select and then the asterisk and I try to go person, um, yeah. I should be seeing the person show up in my drop down, but it doesn't. So I have to always like type the whole thing out. You're missing the from close before the person. Yeah. Yeah, so it still doesn't show up. Okay, so um, we'll try something. Are you using the Windows machine? Yes, I am. Control Shift T. Can you try that? Let's see. If you hold your Control, Control Shift and then T. Yeah, that was what I did. Control Shift. Sorry, did you say T or P as in Peter? P, P as in Peter, yes. Oh, okay. I'm just Control try shift that Peter. Yeah. Okay. Let me try that. Okay. So try typing IntelliSense. No, do that again. Control shift P. Try typing IntelliSense. Just there. Yeah. So that yeah, click on that. Let's see. Okay, so try it again. No, the thing is this, you have to you have to actually let me tell you the trick. If you do a select asterisk from, right? Because the problem is you can't select the column when you have not talked about the database. So try that lesson. Yeah. From yeah, then yeah, you still don't have it. Yeah. But okay, type in the full person dot person lesson. And when you run the query, can you highlight just that line and run the query now? Yeah, go on. You try it again. So, yeah, so I think Azure Data Studio can be flaky sometimes. I right? tried this, but if you disconnect and connect again, it, it should work. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll. Yeah, yeah, I've experienced this too. Yeah, well, most okay. times. So I'll yeah. do that and then try this whole step all right, procedure all right. again, and then I'll probably reach out. Then, then what you can do as well, Grace, when you try disconnect and try again, if it doesn't work, uh, feel free to connect Seso on Telegram. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Okay. Quickly, let's go to um. Let's go to let's see those that have not spoken at all today. Um, Adija, please, um, you want to unmute yourself and go for it, please. Thanks, Rosita. Um, 
Yeah, and thanks, Sesu, um, Timothy as well. Yeah, today's class has been very insightful. You took it from the uh, from the very beginning. Yeah, but a quick one, uh, the question I have, just maybe tell me how to fix it or if I've done something wrong. I don't have the database tables for uh, the person to person. I have others for the product. Maybe there's something I did during installation that's making me miss those other tables. Do you have any tip for me to get this fixed? Um, I think except maybe you did not install the actual adventure work, so you mistakenly dropped the table, else it should be there. Well, I do have the adventure 2017. Okay. But it's just missing some of those other tables. I don't have the complete tables. I have so for the products, I have others. But you know. Yeah, so maybe the backup file you installed, but I think there's a, there's a light version. LIT okay. version and then there's the, the full version. I think okay. the LIT version has just a few tables. But at the end of the day, the whole idea is the same queries you can run on other tables, right? Yes, yes, so yes. In other tables. Concept. Okay, okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. That'll be it. Okay, fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. So let's go to uh Ope. Hello, thank you very much. Uh my question is um if you want to type in the column the column name, is it necessary we should put it in uh, square brackets? Because uh, I don't know, is it without no. square bracket or square back square bracket? So it's, 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 it's about preference, right? If you notice in all my queries, I actually did not put it in a square bracket. Okay. Okay. But, if, a but if yeah, but if the column name has spaces, which is usually okay. rare but possible, then you have to put it in square bracket, just to show that they are together. Okay. The second one, if somebody mistakenly deletes uh, a table, like the woman just said, uh, the lady just said right yeah. now, is there any way to, you know, get it back or you just have to restore the database again? Yeah, like you, have to, it, you, have, you have to restore from backup. That is why, if you remember, Timothy, in the beginning, gave an advice about the transaction, right? Yes. Where you can do, always put the beginning transaction and then the rollback at the end. Okay. So, yeah, it's a safe practice. So if you do that most times, then it will easily be able then there's something called um yeah it's a little bit advanced but you can also create something called save point where you can roll back to a specific save point but you have to implement that in your query right? okay. if not by default once you delete it's gone yeah okay thank you yeah okay okay great um then on the on the chat i think there are two questions i just want to address um we some are asking for in fact a lot of us now one-on-one -on -one chat coming to me about oh i'm not in the telegram group how do i join um so for the first of all you have to join black tech community before you can join the sql group okay and the easiest way to join the black tech community is go to the black tech website identify the program you are interested in register the moment you register you will get an information with the with the with the telegram link to join okay the 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 the, the idea is not um is not the idea for the community is not for everybody to just come in you have to be interested in at least one of the programs so go to black tech look at the programs look at the one you are interested in then once you complete the form, it's a Google form. So don't close the form right away. Once you submit, you see a message and that message has a Telegram link. Click on that link and you join the Telegram. While you're in Telegram, you will now see information about the SQL. There are pinned messages. Look at the pin message. You will see information about the SQL. From there, you can now go into the SQL group for those that are interested in SQL. If you're interested in other programs, then of course you stay tuned as well for more information to be provided. Um, I've just dropped the, the link, uh, one second. Um, yeah, I've just dropped the link on the chat right now. Okay, um, look at the link. I just uh, dropped the link. So that link takes you straight to the link takes you straight to Black Tech upcoming programs. So you will see all the programs, whichever one you're interested in, you will be able to join.
then the other question has to do with um, um, that's the second question right now. SQL, okay? There is going to be cohort two. Like somebody is chatting, oh, this is my first time. There is going to be cohort two. You can see that on the website, we have stopped registration for SQL. The need for that is to ensure we control this. Our typical classes are far less than what we are witnessing. But because, of course, many people want to do SQL, that's why we are allowing many to register for the free SQL. But at the same time, there must be a limit. That's why we stopped registration. So if you are not in this cohort, please exercise some patience. Yeah, another cohort will be opened probably early October. By then, you can register to participate in the next cohort, please. OK. All right. Having said that, let's move quickly to we've got about four more questions to go. And we call it a wrap tonight. Um, let's go quickly to Pa, Pa, Kwasi. Can you yeah, yourself? Um, OK. Um, good day. My, my name is Pa Kwasi. I'm joining the class from China, Beijing, Beijing, oh, China. Oh, wow. Look at you. What time yeah. is it? What time is it in Beijing right now? Um, 9.45 a.m. Oh, wow. Interesting. Nice. Nice to have you. Go ahead with uh, your question. Right. Um, okay, so um, my... Can I share my screen now? Yes, I, you can. I, I please, okay. who, is, who is sharing? Can you stop sharing, please? Who is sharing? Can you stop sharing, please? Okay, one second, okay? Um, just one second, give me one second. All right. It's Rosemary. Yeah, and again, she's not listening or what? I'm not sure what's going on, right? Okay, thank you. Paul Kwasi, please go ahead, please. Okay, so I, I just need um, a help on how to um, restore my uh, um, database because- uh, so, I'm... Sorry, can you share your screen so that it's gonna be easier to understand? No, I, I still can't share it. I still can't share my screen. What is the, why can't you share? What is the error message? Um, it says uh, desktop. I think several others have got, okay. Are you using Windows or Mac? I'm using a Mac. Yeah, but even with the Mac, you should be able to share, except the laptop has it some, some okay, settings. A minute, let me, let me check. Okay, why you try to figure that out? Let's move quickly to uh, because of time. Okay, okay, I've I've, I've tried, I've, I've figured it out. Okay, can you share now? Oh wow, I still can't share. I don't know. Yeah, so see, look at the settings. Um, Mark okay. Users, like uh, if you can help him, post something on the chat to assist him. But I know that, of course. Um, you can you can share irrespective of the system you are using, except there is a restriction you've got on your Mac. Um, Jesse, Jesse, please go for it. Go for it, please. Jesse. Hi, I was muted. I was trying to unmute. Hi. Okay. Perfect. Um, thank you, Cecil and um, G for the presentation. I wanted to just find out about the end region. Um, I missed that part. If you can just kind of walk us back to how you can clean up your screen to look um, neater. Okay, yeah, so uh, um, it's just, um, okay, maybe I should just quickly share it. Nothing really serious. You can see my screen, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's, so it's just a way of organizing your, your code, right? So if you can see, I have the double hyphen, which is the comment, then I have a hash, then region. Then wherever I want it to end, I have the double hyphen and then end region. So these are the two important things. So if I do that, you can see that at this point, I can collapse it. So I have another region and then I have another end region. So when you have long running code, it helps you to be able to collapse your code and then open up you know, the different parts that you need to run. So the collapse thing comes up once you've written it this way? Yes. Automatically? This way. Yeah, automatically. Okay. Once you have this and this, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Excellent. Um, so one second, there's a question. Joshua, you're talking about Scrum. So guys, um, 
we might not be able to start responding to all the questions about the programs. The idea is you go to the website and you are able to see all the programs. It could be Scrum, it could be anyone. We have so many programs starting in September. Choose the one you are interested in, complete the form, and within the week, you will get a response. Then if you want like a faster feedback, um, I'm dropping a phone number, which uh, the operation team members uh, constantly respond to messages. So look at the chat right now. That is the fastest way you can get to Black Tech. Any question you have, upcoming program, any information, send a WhatsApp message on that number. A team member will respond to you, or you can give a call, anyone you, you chose, okay? So that way you can get all the information you need. Let's move quickly. Uh, we've got three more hands and we call it a wrap. Um, Ololade, you have some questions? Go for it, please. Okay, thank you, Sita. Um, thank you, Sisu, for demystifying a lot of things. Um, I'm just trying to uh, make sense of some things. There's a place where you, um, there's something, aha. Uh -huh. There's a command or many of the commands where you said select identity, I mean, business identity, then you used first name, middle name, and um, probably last name. Um, I, I was just wondering why you didn't include the email promotion, the demographics. Is it that that is, uh, those are only the things that you want to uh, make inquiries about or find, I mean, um, pull? Yes, exactly. Those are just the columns I want to pull. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to pull email promotion, you add it after a comma, that's all. Okay. And then they'll appear in the order that you put them, right? So if you want email promotion to come first, you put it before the next one. Okay. Then I, I, I observed also that you used things like syntax, script, operators, and all of that. I don't know whether you have that in that... Um, whether you have like a um, definition of terms or the way you use all those terms in um, in the slides, you have a slide. I don't think you shared the slides with us. I don't know whether you have something that can make us understand the nomenclature better, or maybe you have a, a guide as to that. Okay, yeah, I, I, I think the slide is in Google Classroom. Oh, okay. the slide is there. There is also a cheat sheet as well in the Google Classroom. Oh, yeah, I have that cheat. So for, yeah. for some of us that we are asking for the slide, there is a lady, Tessie. Tessie, you constant you consistently ask for the slide. Mm -hmm. It's in the Google Classroom, please. Okay. Uh, get to the Google Classroom, you see the oh, slide there. There is a cheat sheet okay. as well okay. that was also uploaded in the Google Classroom. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. <laughs> Fantastic. So let's go to um Dear Kolo, dear Kolola, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, thank you, um, Sesu and Timothy, for these classes. Uh, my question is, um, I know that these classes, they are from, uh, it's from the data analysis, data analytics uh, um, point of view, but um, are there queries or how do I run queries on, on this um, database if for me to do something like simulate um, 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 SQL injection. Now, suppose that I want to know the 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 schema, the the um, the nature of the table, the nature of the database itself. I want to find information about the database. How do I run quotes like that on this um, with with this simulation we are having? Thank you. Okay, sorry. If I if I get if I get your question, you say you want to find out. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, so you're saying you want to find out um, if you want to get information about the database. So I don't know if I'm sharing. So if you, under the database databases folder, there's a folder called system database, right? If you expand your database folder, there's a, another folder inside called system database. Yes. And then when you expand that folder, there's a, a database called master. So the master database stores what we talked about in our last class, which is the metadata. So that stores data about the database. So when you create a table, somewhere in the master database, the information is stored, right? About the columns that the table has, the data type that it can hold. But um, the scope of going through um, that might be beyond this class and it's not something I wanted to start with today. 
right? But if you're familiar with stored procedures, right? There's a stored procedure in master called SP underscore columns. So you can actually use that. Then there are views and tables where you can actually query to get information about any table. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Thank so you. they are. Um, we'll explore that. Yeah. Thank so you. just check your master database. Like SP underscore columns is a stored procedure that gives you information about any column. There's a, there's a, there's a, also a, a view called this dot tables that has um, data about the tables. So you can play around with it and don't delete anything there. Don't insert anything there. Just query. And okay. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And of course, if you have any challenges, please, uh, the SQL group on the, on Telegram is there. Okay. You can throw in more, uh, any of those, um, further questions there and, uh, a team member will respond to you. So let's move quickly, guys. We've got two minutes to wrap this up uh, tonight. Um, let's go to Uche. Uche, oh, my, oh wait, hold on one second. Uh, where is JC? No, Pa, Pa Kwesi, right? The guy from China. Are you still here? Are you still here? You had a problem with your mark. I thought it's resolved now. Please, if it's resolved now, please let me know, okay? I would love that your question is answered. Uh, which Omar, please go for it. Which, which Omar, Hi. are you there? Yes. yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for the presentation. It was, I was just listening through because I couldn't uh, get my hands on on my SQL. So I'm just going to share my screen right now. Sorry, so you have a question? Yes, I have a, I'm just, I have a question. I'm not able to connect to the SQL server. Just... So, 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 so at the beginning, were you there at the beginning of the class? Where yes. folks yes, were was. showed how to connect? Yes, um, I'm using a Mac, so it's a little bit different. And I think that's also the same problem Pa is um, having. No, Pa is to share. He was trying to share his screen. So it's different, right? Yeah, but he has uh, already, he has already um, sent a few messages on the chat box. Yeah, because of time. Um, can you make it real quick? For sure. Just doing that right now. Give me a second, please. Uh, so, Don Moses, can you go with your question, please? Moses, why yes, is your mic yes. getting ready? Yes, uh, can I share my screen quickly? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah, so I got a quick question um, in the this section using logical operators. So I was able to follow along when you were doing it. Uh, by the way, thank you so much, uh, Seso and Uche and uh, Osita. Um, yeah, so right here, when you run this command here, the one without the the bracket, yeah. that return, um, as, you, as you can see, I ran here, that return seven, Result and the one with brackets uh, return uh, three. Can you just uh, quickly go over that? Why putting the brackets in front of the first name and uh, after the last name uh, kind of eliminate the uh, yeah at, uh, for for outputs. Okay, so um, what I was trying to explain was um, the the the, qu the way queries run is the bracket is evaluated first just the way you have in um, board maps, right? So if you look at the second query, we're saying that the first name should be Ken or the last name should be Maya. Then, and the middle name is going to be not null. That means middle name should not be empty, right? So when you run the query, it's going to check the first criteria. It's going to look, it's going to extract all the Ken's and Maya's first. Then after extracting all the Ken's and Maya's, it will now filter out Oh, I all got the it. Kens, 
you get the you get the idea. Yeah, yeah. So it yeah. eliminates all the nulls. So we have exactly. four nulls, and that, exactly. those are not taken in consideration. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Moses, are you okay now? Yes, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Uh, this is really insightful. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. All right, uh, Uchom, are you set now? Um. I don't know why I'm having difficulty okay. now. Okay, so so we we're gonna be calling it a wrap. Um, which your mom, Paul Kwasi, please. Uh, both of you are using Mac. Um, maybe you're having some challenges, and I know some folks have been able to figure out the Mac related issue on the Telegram. Please, uh, let's post our challenge on Telegram, and I'm sure somebody will reach out to you. Uh, there's a guy, I think John by name. Uh, I can tag him if you guys post that. Uh, he has been very helpful with the Mac users as well. So let's do that because of time. I we really want to make sure we wrap this up by ten o'clock. Uh, tomorrow is work, so that those that you know, um, those of us that of course have got um, early meetings tomorrow, of course we can wake up early and get to things right. Um, so Sesu, finally, uh, Don, can you stop sharing, Moses? Then Sesu, finally, in, in respect to I know the mass operator we will not be able to do that because of time. Um, in the next uh, class, we'll probably take on the mass operator. Then we're now moving to other things. But at a very high level, what are they expecting in the in the assignment? So in, in the assignment, I what we'll be doing is we'll, we'll talk a little of we'll ask questions on what we have tried to achieve today, yes. basic column and row filtering. Yes. So most Moses, sorry, one second. Moses, can you stop sharing your screen, please? Yeah. So we're going to we're going to ask you a couple of questions that have to do with column and row filtering. And we'll, of course, as usual, push it a little further so that you can reset again and get ready for our next class. I think Uche also wanted to say a few things. I'm not sure if it's Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that is fine. Uche, are you here? Yeah, no, I, uh, yes. Okay, now, but... And I wanted to just chip in a few things on those uh, on the data analysis for, for people that are interested in data analysis. It's um, it's all of this data plus in a few other things. You understand how, like the, the information that uh, uh, you are being taught today, you now need to categorize what we are looking at data. So the major essence is to transforming that data into information. You understand, like how we want to see counts, we want to see some, how we just want to trans translate it in, into into information and then let nobody get scared of SQL. Think about it as your own business. The information you want to know about your business, the kind of things you want to know. Try and personalize it. Try and relate it to real life. How you just find it is very, very interesting. It's uh, you run a business, you want to know how many customers bought, bought uh, coconut today. How many customers uh, is owing us how many customers pay, how much did we make this month? Those are just the various information as a business owner you might want to do. So once you begin to personalize it with SQL, how you begin to find out that, that you're gonna, within yourself, ask the not rocket science. And, and I really think we are all gonna be good at it. Fantastic. Thank you so very much for that insight. Um, so I was just made aware that the link, um, the link to the upcoming program, I think there's an error message, like a 500 um, error message or so. So please, what you can do is to send an email for now. Um, the technical team, they are looking at it to see exactly what the issue is. Um, so if you look at the chat, I've dropped an email. You can send an email for whichever program you are interested in. Um, you know, the team will be able to respond to you via the email, please. Uh, the technical team will work on the 500 error and, and resolve that uh, in no record time. Um, okay, excellent. Great delivery today. Uh, Sensu, uh, Timothy, uh, Remy, you know, I appreciate you guys for the excellent work. 
um, taking things from the very granular level, says you did a very, very good justice to this, and um, we appreciate you so much. Um, especially those freaking out at some point, you know, right now, you know, their mind don't they come down small, small, you know, <laughs> knowing that believing that this thing is possible, you, you can do this, guys. Um, uh, forget about the black screen for me, I prefer using the white screen. I don't know why it says always use the black one. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> somebody even commented on that at some point, you know, that this black screen, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> no, it's just a team, it's just a preference. You can yeah, you, you don't want. forget about the color of the screen, whether it's black or white or yellow. The, mm -hmm. the most important thing is to understand the logic, understand that this is a skill. Yeah. This is a skill. Yeah, the black screen reminds you of the command line. And it's scary. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. And someone said black is beautiful. <laughs> you yeah, know. Black yeah, is yeah. No, so guys, it's all about the mindset. Remember, you can do this, that's the truth. Uh if one thing you have to tell yourself is that if others are doing it, then why can't I? Right. So that is it. It's a skill you can develop. You can really have um, you know, a lot of um joy doing things like this if you have passion for analytics so even if you're a business analyst you're a project manager trust me you can learn sql and have it in your pocket as one of the skills that you have got that can come in handy for you you never can tell it might not be now it might be in the future so please let's take this seriously irrespective that it's a free program but let's put in a lot of effort into it learn you know, activate, you know, the coconut head, you know, let's, let's, let's get, let's, let's get this head, you know, fully activated, you know, and ready, ready, ready. So that once those opportunities show, of course, you're able to maximize it. Uh, just like I mentioned, Power BI session is tomorrow. Um, you join the Telegram group because that is where all information will be happening throughout the week till the next week we are going to meet. So if you're not in Telegram, make sure you join the Telegram group and continue to collaborate. And you have any questions, any clarifications? There are so many one-on-one -on -one chats coming to me. Trust me, I might not be able to respond all of them. What you need to do, just send email. I just dropped the email again on the chat. Send email to that email and the operations team will be able to respond to you guys. And there's a phone number I also dropped as well. That is also another phone number you can use as well to, uh, to reach out to the team and you get all responses. And you want to speak with me personally, Mention in the email that you want to speak with, with Osita. Of course, they will be able to provide you with my cell number as well. Okay, please let us continue to build ourselves up as Black people. Most times we have barriers, we have stereotypes, we have so many challenges as Black simply because we are Black. The only way we can defeat all these challenges is by what? Open our game. Is by what? Developing more capability and skills. The more skills and capability you develop, trust me. <laughs> they, will, they will always want to have you at the table because they know you've got something to deliver. At that point, nobody cares about the color of your skin anymore, right? So skill, once you develop that skill, trust me, forget about the color, forget about the barrier, forget about the stereotypes, okay? That is really what Black Tech is really trying to achieve within the Black community. And it's incredible seeing you guys committed to this. Thank you so much, every one of you. On the chat, let's feel free to you know, that positive affirmation we keep talking about, tell yourself, I can, I will, I can, and I will. Let's end with positive affirmation tonight. If there's anyone that is afraid of SQL, please don't be. Go through the recording once it is shared and network within the Telegram group. Ask questions, network, collaborate, okay? Tell yourself, I can, and I will. Thank you so much, everyone, from all of us here, uh, Sensu Uche, and also Remy. Remy is our technical manager that does uh, all the technical stuff at the background, and of course helps with the upload of the of the video on the on the YouTube channel. He's also the program manager for the data analytics school as well. Okay, check out Black Tech program, incredible programs that have transformed lives. Six figure jobs is commonplace today. People are getting jobs. So if you are underemployed, you are earning 40K, 50K, 60K, 70K, know that you can earn 100K plus, okay? Come in, register for a program that have got great alignment to where you want to go and see yourself succeed. Thank you everyone and have a very good night.